this being Breast uh, Cancer Awareness Month. Um, so many families have been touched with that. My family's been touched with it and thoughts and prayers to any of those who have lost someone to breast cancer or, or are fighting it now. So uh, just to take a moment away from football to, to get to realistic life here. Um, Saturday night was one of the toughest losses that I've ever been around. I, I went back and just thought about it, and there's probably three, and uh, this one's as tough as any because we had opportunities to win it with one play probably four or five times. And when you do that, you've got to finish it. And, and we were there. And um, whether it was the holding call when we're first in goal from the eight, uh, whether it was the missed field goal, uh, whether it was the delay of game where we make the field goal and they make miss the field goal and there was a flag on the field and they picked it up so we were a little bit later getting out on the field and I thought we probably should have reset that. Um, but that wins a game for us at that point. Uh, two two-point plays, uh, one of them for sure could have won the game because they had already we'd already stopped them. Uh, so when you go back and study it, played hard, we're ready to play, um, I was really proud of the players for how hard they played on the road in a tough environment where we hadn't played well in the past. Um, and once again, they come down to uh, the longest game in ACC history with a, a six overtimes. Um, I did break my promise to Sally. I promised her that I wouldn't hurt so bad after losses, and uh, that's not my makeup. I can't do that. So I, I don't know. That sounded really good. I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll handle that and do it. But losing still stinks. It hadn't changed since I've been out in five years. So, uh, But, uh, again, really, really proud of the players. Um, every week they're giving us all they got. Uh, we've lost four starters in the secondary, so we're so thin back there. Aaron Crawford plays 81 plays. Um, we've got to get some people to help him because um, that's too many. Uh, but these guys are fighting their guts out every week, and, and I'm really, really proud of them. And it's also um, uh, we're, we're having a fantastic recruiting year. So people can see that we're, we're really close. They can see it's happening, uh, and they're wanting to be part of it. So we'll get more depth in the future and, and hopefully better players uh, each year that, that we recruit. Uh, I remember Woody Durham sitting on the other end of the field one night when we were struggling when we first got here, and he said, uh, uh, so what do you think? We're going to be okay. And I remember saying, uh, it's not if anymore, it's when. And, and that's the same thing I would say now. Uh, we're going to be good, and we're going to be really good. And, and this train's taken off, um, and I'm really excited about, about where we're going. Um, specific things uh, about the game, and there's thoughts that I have that I'll share with you and then thoughts that Jeremy's heard from some of you all and, and some of the fans that I'll try to share too and then answer your questions. Um, Jay's really been shorthanded off, uh, defensively, obviously losing four starters. So his problem is you – do you bunch up and try to stop the run and play man-to-man -man outside with inexperienced corners and guys are struggling some? Or do you play zone and let them run the ball? And uh, what we had is Georgia Tech, or Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech's quarterback that came in is 250-pound runner, um, and we didn't stop him. He ran up and down the field and got kids going to be a really good player for the future. They, they probably found them something there with a third quarterback. Uh, so we didn't do a good job of stopping the run, and, and that's something that we've got to do. We did force two turnovers, which is something we haven't been doing in the running game, so, so that was really good. Um, and we didn't respond well um, right before the half. To me, the way you play the last five minutes of the half, the first five minutes of the second half is so key in college football, in, in my experience, through 31 years of being a head coach. And um, we didn't play well as a team. That's a 14-point turnaround. Uh, they score, we get the ball, and, and we have it for only about uh, 20 seconds. Because I think there was 323 left when we got the ball. They've scored, we got to respond and go down and score at the other end. And, and we have a, um, an intentional grounding penalty, uh, an incomplete pass, and a short pass to Corrales. So we kill no time and give them the ball back, and they go back and score again. So the 14-point swing, uh, right before the half that just changed the momentum completely. We came back and took it back to start the second half, but it, it, it uh, didn't help us that they took all those, uh, uh, took 14 points going into half. Offensively, we didn't run the ball very well the second half, and we also didn't protect well, but uh, had some issues up inside with our guards and centers. 
Um, so that was disappointing. Still scored a lot of points, and, and that should be enough to win. So um, proud of those guys. Two-point plays, there's always a lot of discussion. Um, we're three of six for the year. Uh, the national average is in the low 40s. Um, we had a 41% chance of, of making it on Saturday because analytics gives you what your chances are against the team you're playing each week, whether they're right or not, but that's what they do. Uh, but we've still got to improve in those areas. I thought when we got Michael Carter one-on-one -on -one, um, in space, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll take those odds. And, and the guy uh, tackled him out there. So, um, but, but that's something that um, uh, we can still improve on, especially with the new rule. Um, with overtime, I think we'd probably be better off. With, I, I think the rule was good because we could have been still playing. Uh, but I'd like to put the ball to 35 instead of the 25. Uh, fewer people would score, and you'd get out of there faster. So if you just move it back 10 yards, the percentage of scoring isn't near as good. You might kick a field goal, but scoring touchdowns is harder. And I think we would get it over with quicker by doing that than, than what we're doing at the present time, even though I think – because of the LSU Texas A&M six seven overtime game last year, that's the reason they went to this rule because it's not healthy for kids to stay out there that long. Your defensive kids for sure just just give out. Uh, kicking game, really proud of Ben Kiernan for a freshman. He and Drew Little, uh, the snapper, uh, both were committed by Coach Fedora when we got here. And um, I talked to Larry the other day, and he asked how they were doing. And and it's unusual to sign a punter and sign a deep snapper. I'd, Never done that except for Justin Tucker. He's the only guy we signed ever at that position. We always took walk-ons, and the ones that played the best ended up getting the scholarships. But uh, in this case, uh, Ben, it's sure been worth his scholarship. We should have gotten another ball inside the two that uh, um, J Javon Terry got his feet in the end zone and batted out. That was a great kick, just a great punt for us. And Jonathan Kim did a great job kicking off. He kicked all his uh, in into the end zone, and there were no returns. So. Uh, we're going to let Jonathan uh, do the kickoff duties. They'll still compete, but right now he would be doing that. And Jonathan will also take over the uh, field goal duties. We're 10 of 16 on field goals, um, three of those being blocked. Uh, but uh, still, we've got to do a better job when we get down to that last second kick. We've got we to gotta make it. Um, and once again, we had about four chances, uh, one play chances to win the game. That's why we said be the one. Somebody got to step up and make the play. Coaches got to do a better job. We, we all got to do a better job. When we get that close to winning, uh, we've got to win the game. Uh, there were some question marks with time management right before the half. Uh, they had an inexperienced quarterback in the game with a, a bad leg. Um, so we did not want to give him more time. We wanted to press him. And I thought by calling time out to try to save time – for us, we were allowing them with him with a sore leg to do a better job of organizing how to score. So that's why we held those timeouts in our pocket. Uh, time management at the end of the game, uh, I'm always going to hold the timeouts in my pocket if I can. Uh, they were fourth down and one and a half uh, with a running quarterback that we hadn't stopped. Um, there was probably a minute something left in the game. Uh, they were lining up to go for it. We didn't know if they were going to try to pull us off. They were going to go for it. I didn't want to stop the clock and give him a minute left if he makes the first down, go down, kick the field goal, and win the game. But with our timeouts in our pocket, we had three and 38 seconds from 25 yard, or 75 yards away. There's plenty of time to get down and get a field goal because you've, you've got your whole playbook. You can throw the ball across the middle and call timeout. In college football, 38 seconds is longer than you think because you make a first down. The clock stops, unlike the NFL. You get out of bounds. Um, and Phil was conservative at that point, and um, that he had a, a check with me, had a pass called, and it was quarterback draw if the pass, if the quarterback didn't like the pass. So that's why Sam ended up running the ball. Um, but you. You want to save all your timeouts. You've got to have one left now because of the 10-second runoff. That changed coaching for sure. You can't be without a timeout in your pocket because 10-second runoff can, can lose the game for you. Uh, but you never want to have 10 on the field, um, nearly a del delay a game. I didn't think the field goal was going to be a delay a game. That was an overtime where I would have taken our timeout there. But um, you, you don't want to waste your timeouts. So for, for those who are – 
wanting to coach time management. I think we won more games in the fourth quarter within three points than anybody in the country at Texas. I think we we're about 17 out of 20. So uh, what we're doing works. It just didn't work well on, on Saturday, but it had nothing to do with, with time management. The time management that we had against South Carolina was very poor, and, and that was awful and embarrassing, and, and uh, we fixed that. So that's, that's not going to happen again. Uh, people have asked, why go for the fake punt? Um, we're fourth. We just took a shot deep on third and one uh, with our tight end. Um, had a chance there for a big play. I thought it was a great call by, by Phil Longo. So we're going to be aggressive. We said we're, we're so thin on defense right now. We have to outscore people. So we're going to go for fourth and one. So our thought was either go for it or, or line up for the punt. If it was there, take it. It was there. It's exactly what we wanted. We didn't execute it. So. Uh, we should have done a better job coaching and in, in practice to to get the one yard, uh, but we we're going to go for it either way, and that's just that's who we are right now. Um, somebody said they saw me getting on one of the coaches on the sideline. I'm on the coaches all the time. I'm glad that the camera's not always on me. Um, people have asked if I've ever fired one during the game. Uh, no, but I felt like it. So, so you fans that get mad at assistants, I'm mad at them too. So my mother used to tell me, "Honey, why'd you hire these guys when?" when we lose a game. So, uh, yeah, I get on them a lot. Uh, I love them. I think they're doing a tremendous job. They're giving our guys a chance to win. Uh, but when I see something I think we can do better, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be direct and I'm going to be honest and transparent with them, uh, just like I, I am with everybody else. So uh, I, I do get on them. Officials, um, I love officials. Uh, the guys are, very honestly, they, they have full-time jobs. They're so passionate about this. They work themselves to death. They do this on the weekends. And they love the game. And, and I hate it for them when they make a bad call. I, I think there were only two, but I saw two coaches fined yesterday for making comments about officiating. Um, I came back to, to help kids and, and, and try to help the game that I love because I, I, I want us to change some things and clean it up. And um, I thought after seeing the two coaches suspended yesterday, uh, there's three factors in a ball game. There's our team, there's the opposing team, and the officials. And two of the three are called out. Officials aren't. And they don't make as much as we do, but they probably make as much as the kids. So what I would love is, is uh, I've said it, and maybe, maybe it's that you have um, a challenge flag as a coach, and you hold it and use it, but if there's a critical play, whether it's reviewable or not, if you challenge, it has to go upstairs and then they can look at it. Um, and that doesn't slow the game down, uh, but it gives you an opportunity for the one play that you think the officials have missed that's not reviewable, uh, that changes the entire game to have it at, at least looked at upstairs. Um, if not, some people thought, I, I said last time, challenge every play, people don't listen. Uh, what I said was, if it is a critical play, I said a critical play in a game that changes the game, and it's not reviewable, take it upstairs, and the guy upstairs should be able to say, uh, that was a face mask. That was holding on them on this critical play, so uh, pick up your flag, throw your flag, uh, whatever it needs to be at that point. And I also think that um, they should allow us to bring plays that are, are questionable um, in here, because we turn in a number of plays every week to the officials. They should let us bring plays in here and let us show them to you. I mean, that's what we got to get accountability from everybody. Because kids are losing games that they fight their guts out. Coaches are losing games. Uh, they're making human errors. As coaches and players, we are making human errors. Uh, we should do everything we can do to help the official not make a human error that changes the direction of a game because they want it to turn out right. These are good men. They don't want to go home and know that they missed a call after they missed it. They'd rather it be fixed. And, and um, I do think the fact that we've got instant replay is, is helping with the credibility. It's helping the officials. We've saved a lot of games because of a poor call. Uh, but I think we can take another step. And, and I think that's something that, that we need to do. A homecoming game this weekend, rival game with Duke. Um, victory bells on the line. I love David Cutcliffe. He's, he's one of the great guys in this business that's been in it for a long time. He's been on the, uh, he was on the uh, um, AFCA board with me. Uh, he's a guy who cares about the game. He's helping change a lot of rules. 
He's done a tremendous job at Duke coaching. Um, he, he is the perfect guy at Duke. He, he does a great job coaching. He gets good kids that play hard for him, and um, they're usually going to take care of the ball, and they're usually going to uh, kick it well and punt it well, and they're, they're usually going to make sure that they have the fewest penalties in the game. And, and that's what you do. They come off of a tough game with Virginia because those things didn't happen for them last week. Um, and my experience is that uh, we're going to have to pick it up because we're disappointed with a, a tough loss. Uh, they're going to pick it up because they're disappointed in, the, in their performance on Saturday at Virginia. Question marks. Yes, I would take back every one that didn't work. The, the holding was a killer. That was a killer. We're first and goal from the eight. Um, then you have to make a decision. Do you go ahead and try to run it in because we're running the ball at will at that time? Or do you center it and kick a field goal like an extra point? Uh, I mean, it's, it's one of the two. When we got the holding call, it puts us in a position where now we're trying to get yards um, to get back to a, a better field goal. So, so that, was, that was a killer. Um, uh, the last uh, two-point play, Sam's got to get the ball in the end zone. He can't take the sack because our only chance is to get it out. And he tried to, and he was, Sam's smart. Guy just got him before he got it off. So we've got we've to get that ball in the end zone for sure. You mentioned the delay of game before the field goal and overtime. Could you go back and kind of what happened there and yes. how that transpired? There was a flag. Um, so we're all waiting to see what the flag is. They picked the flag up, and they waved it off. So... We're delayed coming in, uh, and, and then the clock ran out. So I, I wish they had restarted for us. Should, is that something you think that should be fixed? I think it's something, just another thing that we should you look at. a certain amount of time you could play off, but you lost some of that time. Yeah. So you were out of routine then. Yes, we were waiting to see what the conclusion was. And then when we got it, we're, we're late getting out. So. Mac, as you know, we don't get really any information from the conferences about the officiating miscues. When you turn in plays to the conference office, what type of feedback do you typically get? It's a good question. We don't turn it in unless we feel like it's a flagrant miss. And a lot of times it's a no call that, that we turn in. And then uh, the uh, supervisor of officials, usually on Tuesday, I think, uh, Monday or Tuesday, uh, he sends us back, I agree with your thought, uh, I disagree, and here's why. I agree, and here's why. And that's all you get. Did you send this? We, we do it every week. And, and we don't send anything in unless we feel like it's a flagrant game changer. At the end of regulation, the, the three plays with Sam, the two runs, and the one I guess we was sacked. Those two runs, those were his calls based on the, what he saw in the defense? The they were passes play. that were called – and he didn't like what he saw. Obviously, you don't want to turn the ball over. Uh, Coach's kid, smart, let's go to overtime. If it doesn't look good, he didn't like what he saw, so he ran. We're trying to get the first down. In that situation, with 38 seconds and three timeouts, what you normally try to do, get something to get a first down. Get to the 35-40. Then you try to take a shot, and then you try to take a shot to get a field goal. So you got three or four shots there that, that you can take. And more than that, if you throw in completions and um, Sam just didn't like what he saw. So his other option, because we, we had people out of the backfield, his other option was to try to get it himself. What else? Is there a reason why the running game wasn't working as well in the second half? It's 23 carries for 27 yards. Yeah, we, half yeah we didn't block them as well. Do you think that's a, a lack of depth with some guys tired? Or I think so. We had some guard center issues, and, um, you know, they're playing every play every week. So we've got to look at uh, uh, Josh Aduzu playing more um, probably, uh, but he's the only backup that's played. So we're really playing with five guys and a little with Josh some. So Billy Ross didn't play on Saturday. Um, and, and that was an issue for us. They started covering guards and centers in there and giving us more problems, and, and we didn't handle it very well. Along the same lines, defensive line, um, Tamari Fox didn't play, uh, the, the grad transfer, or the Juco transfer, uh, Raymond didn't play. What, what? Yeah, um, Tamari did play. I don't know how many plays he got. He did play some. Okay. Um, so you, you can count how many there were. 
16. Um, so come on, Ross, wake up, man. You, were you not there or were you there. listening to music? What, what were you doing? Come on. Did you write the article that said Tamari played 16 plays and, and you forgot? Um, gee, come on, Ross, man. Was there, I mean, was there just was there a reason why? Uh, Cater's playing better. He had really picked it up, and, and we want Tamari to play a lot. But if you've got a senior uh, that's a 6'5 senior that's playing really well, um, he's got five games left in his career, um, and he's earned the rights. You want to play him. So, so that helped. Uh, Ray um, strained an elbow, something on his shoulder, and he, he wasn't really 100%, so that's why he didn't play. Zach Gill came in for um, Strobridge when he got hurt. Zach did a good job and made a couple of plays. Uh, but we've got – that's we're, – we're really thin in that inner part. We can play Hopper and we can play Tamari Fox and we can play Taman Fox and we can play Cater. Those guys can all play and we can interchange them. The three older ones are playing a little bit more right now than the freshmen. Uh, but inside, we've got to get better there. When you got together with the team yesterday – Go ahead. When you got together with the team yesterday after a six-overtime loss, when you looked at that – yeah, it was, uh, um, you know, I, I told them we, we had a loss earlier in the year and I walked in, they were all laughing, cutting up, and and I, and I said, this this isn't right. If, if you're laughing and cutting up and okay with a loss, then you probably didn't put enough into it because it's got to hurt you. And, and on their way home Saturday night, they were devastated. Uh, I walked into this room and they were, they were whipped. I mean, they just, come on, come on, man. Well, what do we have to do to, to win a game? Um, so, and I felt the same way. I, I felt whipped. It, it's one of those days you don't want to go to work. But then again, I came back to pick up kids and try to teach them and learn from difficult situations and no better one than this to learn from. So uh, I've got to learn to pick myself up. I, I did that better on Sunday and, and told them that uh, uh, I'm very proud of you. you. You're still in the mix of a lot of stuff. Every game's come down to the end. We could be... We could very easily be um, seven and zero, um, six and one, um, or zero and seven. So, uh, I mean, it's every game has come down to the end. So they they are giving us what they've got, and um, like I said, Jay's the one that's more shorthanded than anybody, uh, and Jay's not a griper. He just says, "Next man up, let's go." But it it does affect how he calls because he changes up so much and brings people from everywhere. And if you're putting uh, guys that are struggling some on an island outside, you better get to that quarterback uh, before you do it. The, um, a gutsy call by Virginia Tech's a, a freshman quarterback, um, fourth down and three to win the game, they throw a fade. And it is a perfect throw. So um, I, I think that's just what I told the guys is, uh, we're close. We're improving. Uh, it, it, it wasn't one play. Each of us need to get better to make a, a few more plays, and then we win the game. And, and it was at the five minutes before the half. Who let down? What should have happened? Why the quarterback long run? Why the wheel for a touchdown? Uh, what mistakes did we make? Why didn't we jump up and bat the ball down when we were in the end zone with, with uh, receivers two or three different times? When we were there, we just got to make plays. Um, why didn't we catch the ball down the middle as a tight end? Why why didn't we convert on third down and one? What happened on the fake punt? So you, you go back to 10 or 15 plays. It's usually seven plays in a game. This one had 10 or 15 that we win the game if we make any of those plays. So that's what I told them. Let's don't feel sorry for ourselves. Let's play better and and get uh, rejuvenated here for Duke. We, we haven't had a good record against Duke the last seven years. I think we're two and five. Uh, so we need to pick it up and start worried about next week. I was going to ask about yesterday. Is your job kind of rebuilding them, getting them to where you, you need them to be tomorrow and you're going to practice a little more difficult this week than after the first three losses because of what you just laid out? Yes. Uh, my job with, with everybody is to make sure everybody knows what we did well and what we did wrong. And, and I told the players, uh, there's more players in the training room after you lose. There's more players sensitive, pointing fingers, questioning after you lose. So that's out. Uh, I don't hear any of it. Uh, I also told them, if you, you guys want to play pro ball, and all of them do, they play on Sunday and then go play Thursday. So don't talk to me about being stiff and sore. And they play 24 games. 
So if you want to play, understand that, that go get your degree if you're sore. Because NFL guys are real sore. They hit harder than you guys do. And then the second thing I do is have to build them back up. Show them the positive things we did. Show them what we've got to do better. And I do the same thing with the coaches. Um, I, I am a lot more critical of the coaches with them face-to-face than you all or our fans. I mean, my, my job is to grill them and be hard on them and, and, and go back through the game plan with them. On, on every Sunday, we sit down and say, next year in Virginia Tech game, what are we going to do different? And, and that was it. And, and you, you get all over the offensive staff, they scored a bunch of points. So, and they didn't turn the ball over. So I, I think, again, that's enough points. But you need to be one more than, than the other team. Uh, we get on about, well, we didn't run it the second half, but we threw it well. And one of the things Ross Bud Foster does, he makes it hard to run the ball. He's going to have eight around the ball all the time, and you've got to hit some deep shots, which we did. So I think that's, the, that's one. And at halftime, he probably said, we cannot let them keep running the ball. We're going to have to make them throw it to beat us. And like in talking to Phil Longo, if they're all on the line of scrimmage and you got guys wide open and you got a really good passer, you got to protect it but get it to them. So that, that's what this game comes down to. Uh, and defensively, I, we missed some tackles. Uh, we, we had three sacks, I think. We, we needed more. Um, they, they did a smart thing bringing in the young freshman quarterback. We'd never seen him, but gosh, the guy's 6'4", 250, uh, and hard to tackle, and especially in the fourth quarter. So um, give them credit for, for that. Matt, Matt you touched on the um, clock management situation. Yes. You've, you've coached for a long time. Do you have a, a philosophy with those situations going in, or, or do you try to approach it kind of in a singular fashion with each and every situation? Yeah, you have to – handle each and every one different, but my basic philosophy is you never ever use a timeout till you have to. You save them. You keep them in your pocket. It really makes me mad when we've got 10 on the punt team and we have to use a timeout to get an 11th one out there. Um, in some cases, if Longo or Bateman say, Coach, I don't like the way we're lined up. Can you give me a timeout? Uh, I'm the only one that can call timeouts, but I'll give it to them if it's a critical situation. Just like if we're going to have delay of game on a punt, we're not going to waste a timeout for that. We, we can gain that five yards because Ben's punting so well. If it's a field goal, you don't take timeout unless it gets you out of field goal range. So it, that would be the, the thing that would be determined by each game. Um, but basically, my, my thought is don't use them unless you have to and use your clock management because college football allows you to spike the ball. It allows you to stop on a first down. It allows you, when the ball's out of bounds, to, to stop the clock. All of those things, to me, give you a chance in college football to, to move the ball down the field. Matt, to sort of follow up on what Andrew was asking about building guys back up, so much of coming into the season was all the close losses they had had and confidence being deemed because of that. You won some early ones, but now they're not winning some of these close games, and obviously it's been very difficult games. And do you worry about losing some of those gains in confidence from before, or do you feel pretty good that the confidence they gained from closing out a couple of close games is still carrying over? Yeah, I, I feel good. You, you know, they're. Uh, I, I think they're very confident. And what we've done is shown them why we lost the game. So there, we had, in some of those last year, they were close, but they were late. It, it wasn't really close. Uh, it wasn't down to the last play. We had four or five one plays to win the game. <laughs> And, and Virginia Tech did, too. They missed the field goal. Uh, so if we made ours uh, with the delay of game, we make that field goal, they miss theirs, we, we win the game. And I also told them it's really interesting to me in sports that uh, we make the field goal, we make the two-point play. We're all talking about how great we're doing and life's great. And, oh, my gosh, we have turned this thing. And it's wonderful. And we're in the greatest place ever. This is unbelievable. And now we stink because of those five plays we didn't make. So uh, it's, it's really a strange feeling. I, I told them that. We'd be dancing in the locker room if we make one of those five plays. And instead, we're all walking around moping. And it, it's just uh, it's foolish sports. I also ask them, wonder who started getting mad over winning and losing. Christian's lines, I mean, where, where is it? Where, that had to be way back. I don't know. Uh, or maybe it's when they started scoreboards. But it's a shame that a game that good 
played by those kids and those sets of coaches, somebody had to lose. It just it, it was a great game. You mentioned recruiting, how it's going well. Obviously, you can't talk about particular guys, big news this week. What, what are the recruits and coaches and families saying with momentum and particularly in-state guys? Yeah, the, the recruiting's going so well. They know it's coming. If you got a young quarterback that's doing well, they like that. They see the guys are having fun. They see they're competing. Their rear end's off every week. They're seeing the stands are full and we're selling out. Um, so everything's good. It's just um, uh, we got so many guys wanting to come right now. It's, it's, it's really frightening. It's good. It's cool. From where we were when we started the spring and everybody talking about, eh, you got no crowds. We don't know if you're going – winning games and don't know about the guys trying and we don't know about your staff and and now uh because both sides of the ball have seen that we know what we're doing with coaching and with kids playing so hard i, I think they and they see how close we are uh, i had so many texts from recruits and recruits parents leaving blacksburg just saying oh my gosh what a game can't wait for my son to get there uh so it's 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 all it's all good right now going back to the conversation that how long does it take for a head coach and an offensive coordinator to kind of get on the same page with exactly what they want and what situations? I, I feel just walked in. I, I think we're we're good with all of our coaches. There'll be if Phil and I are here ten years, there'll be things that we disagree on. That's it. And I was an offensive coordinator, so it's harder to be an offensive coordinator for me than defensive coordinator because uh, I love play calling. That was that was one thing that I, I was passionate about. And I, I love doing. Uh, but Phil's done an amazing job with uh, all young offensive linemen, except for Charlie Heck. And uh, in fact, everybody on offense is back next year that's starting right now, except uh, Charlie Heck, I think. Everybody else is back. So, um, you know, you what, we scored 41. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, but uh, I'm just, I'm direct with our coaches. I'm hard on them, then I move on. And, and they understand that. It's, uh, it's all of them. Uh, it's, not, it's not just one. Um, I was mad that uh, we had to delay a game on the field goal. Maybe it wasn't our fault, but it still was because was, uh, I was mad we had a field goal blocked. Um, I, I was upset with that. I was upset we didn't kick the first ball in the end zone. I mean, you, you go back through my life is I got all the problems. Phil's got his. Jay's got his. Lonnie Galloway's got his. They, they all have their – Scott Boone's got his. I got them all. So um, I'm having to, to – balance something during that ball game at all times. And um, I, I really, the other thing, I came back to win and, and help North Carolina get back where we are. So I knew how critical each play was uh, during that ball game. So, um, I mean, I'm killing myself trying to help us get back where we need to be. And like I said, we're going to get there. But, but without energy from me and without caring from me and without passion from me, then Phil can't have it and Jay can't have it and Scott can't have it and our team can't have it. Um, if I'm standing over there doing nothing, just watching the game, you know, why am I here? Why pay me? Uh, and I don't want to get in their way. The, the hardest thing you, you do, and Ross just kind of said it, is for Phil, he scores 41 points. He throws up and down the field. We get 500 yards total offense. And our question is, why didn't we run it better? You know, uh, scoring's the key. Uh, and, and stats are not. And I think that's the biggest thing. And and, and we can be stat guys, but uh, I'd rather run it for 400 yards every game. But people kind of get in the way of that if they see you're starting that, if they're any good. So most so. of us have the luxury of having disagreements with our bosses in offices. Um, is it? I mean, you've been doing this for quite a while. Is it still a little strange to have that sort of thing play out in front of cameras? And, nah. uh, you, know, you know what? I, I never think about the crowd, yeah. and I never think about a camera. Yeah. I don't. And I never look at it. So I. I don't go back and see what I look like on the sideline or what I said or when I said it. I'm not ever going to say anything in my mind that's inappropriate. So I, I say what I think. And, and like I said, coming back, I've been much more transparent with you all than I probably was before. I, I thought I was, but people told me I wasn't. Uh, so that, that's, uh, that, that's something I feel better about.